at 6.30 p.m. Prayer will be by our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson. The pledge will be by councilman at Large Adam College. Father, we're about before you tonight, we give you honor, we give you praise. Thank you for the blessings in our lives, God. We ask that your presence be here tonight for this council. Give them wisdom, Father, give them unity as we conduct the business of the city. And as always, God, we thank you for the edge of protection you place around our first responders. We ask that you continue to do so. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on Calvary's cross for our sins. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, um, Mr. Ankerson, and thank you, Councilman College. That brings us to our agenda order approval. Ms. Shancy, do we have any additions, changes? Yes, sir. I need to pull this. This is your item number six. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a correction on page 242 of the August 16th minutes, which is page 349 in the agenda packet, the change in the first whereas section. And item number three, the senator for item number three, we have new project amounts in the resolution that accompanies that after that. Thank you, Ms. Shancy. Do we have a motion to approve the order, agenda order approval with changes by Ms. Shancy? So moved. Motion by Councilman Gallat. Do we have a second? Second. Se second by Councilman College. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to our announcements by Ms. Shancy, our city manager. Dashes Farmers Market will be September 10th, starting at 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. at George Martin City Park. Tasty Thursday will be September 22nd, beginning at 11 a.m. at the Singing River Mall property. The City of Goshe and Goshe First United Methodist Church will be hosting a truck or treat on October 14th, starting at 5 p.m. until 7.30 p.m. at Goshe First United Methodist Church, followed by Family Movie Night, featuring the Adams Family 2, starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Goshe Sports Park. The City of Goshe's Cruising for the Decades event will be October 2nd, starting at 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. at the Singing River Mall property, followed by a drive-in movie featuring Footloose at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, Ms. Shancy. That brings us to our presentation agenda by Jeff May from ba Michael Baker International regarding Martin Bluff Road Widening Project. Thank you, Mayor. I, uh, I put together a little PowerPoint presentation just to kind of walk you through some of the items that I have to talk about. It's lot, pictures say a lot better than words do. Uh, I always hit the wrong switch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm here to discuss the Martin Bluff Roadway project. The project is underway. Okay. And just some uh, general information for me, the contractor's Gulf Breeze Construction. They are a local contractor. Um, the notice to proceed was issued in November of 18, 2021. This is a working day contract. So you have uh, 279 working days. And a working day defined by MDOT is any day that you can work more than six hours. So I know there's been a lot of talk here lately about when is it going to be complete and that. And as we walk through the, um, the presentation, I think you'll kind of get a, a grasp of why well, things look like they're a little bit delayed right now. So the initial construction cost was $7.4 million. And then those were our partners that we're working with. Of course, MDOT is, is working with us hand in hand as well as Gulf Breeze Construction. So work completed to date. Um, the majority of the work has been um, focused on infrastructure, which is we've installed over 6,000 feet of 12 inch water line. Uh, they've installed some fire hydrants and gate valves at all these uh, uh, intersection points. We've made tie-ins back to the existing system uh, at, at those roads indicated as Clare Home, Collinsworth, and Holmes, Homestead, as well as at Royals Road, where we tied back into the existing system. And all the new lines are in working order. They've all been tested, passed all the tests, and then the system is in service as of today. 
And I just got a few pictures here kind of showing you kind of the realm of what's going on out there. Of course, the, uh, the water line work started early on in the project. Uh, luckily then, we had fairly dry weather. We were able to make some headway. Just some more shots of what you see. That's what a lot of people don't understand. That all of this work is going on, and then they cover it up so nobody sees it. So as long as your water works, then everything's fine. So hopefully uh, everything is operating as it's How deep are those water lines in the ground? So the average depth of a water line is going to be anywhere from 30 to 30, 36 to maybe 42 inches. But you can see in some places right there, like where we have a, a, a culvert, we'll have to put a saddle in to go under those culverts. So the current work, the things that we're doing right now, the things that you would see today if you walk out or drive out there is, is installation of storm drain pipe and the construction of uh, storm drain inlets. You'll also see some red dirt being placed on the shoulder on the south side of Mark Bluff Road. Uh, that's for us to add some four feet of temporary paving uh, for a, a traffic shift that's going to be coming up in the next few months. So, um, I, I have another picture of that that's going to show you what's going on. Of course, installing and maintaining erosion control. This project is under a stormwater permit, so every at least every week they have to put together a report, and then they have to put together a stormwater report after every significant rain event. That's the end rain event over like about a half inch. So. And then also, while they're installing the um, storm drain piping, they're removing the existing water lines that were in the ground that are, are abandoned as of, as of this day. And these are just some shots of that to kind of see what they're doing. The left hand is the, uh, the storm drain pipe. Of course, this is all reinforced concrete pipe. All the joints are being wrapped with the fabric, so we hope in the future we won't have any uh, potholes or sinkholes as a result of that. So the upcoming elements of work, as you saw a picture there, the temporary, um, they're bringing some dirt in for the temporary shoulder paving. Um, the next phase is to shift traffic over. You can just kind of see in this diagram below, we're going to shift the traffic over four feet. And then that way the contractor will put up a guardrail and be able to work in some of the existing roadbed as well as that just to the north of the roadway and then have a safe work area because they're going to be installing a lot of storm drain pipe. And then this is where you'll see all the new roadway work coming. And then the next meeting I come to, hopefully we'll be past this phase and I'll show you how we're going to shift over to the next side. So we have like three phases that we're going to work this project. This is phase one. We'll work everything to the north. Once all the work is completed to the north, we'll shift traffic on that side. We'll go to the south and work. And then once all the work is completed on the south, then we'll split traffic and finish the work down the median. And then of course, you know, continue with the roadway construction. This is a graphic I kind of put together myself just so y'all could kind of understand why um, construction really had not progressed as much this summer as we would have liked it to. As you can see there in August, we had 16 inches of rain and it's just been wearing us out. By the time the road, it gets dry enough to start working again, then it rains. So hopefully come set, you know, later in this month, in October, usually some of the drier months we have that we'll, we'll get some more uh, some more progress out of that. And then if there's any specific questions that you have of me, I'll try to answer them as best I can. <laughs> um, later on in the, on the agenda, on the consent agenda, I did want to let y'all know that, that we do have a supplemental agreement on there for the contractor. Um, this is actually a deduct. Um, so during the course of the installation of the water line, that we found some line sizes that we didn't plan for initially so we had to add a few items so at that time when we went ahead and reconciled all the items that were completed up to then so we could kind of balance out some of the work yes sir i've asked a question about that dirt ditch from the corner store all the way to the the last house there before you get to the Cambridge Baptist Church okay. there's a deep dirt ditch there mm -hmm. what is any if anything's being done to address that ditch because it's catching all those three entrances coming out of Cambridge Square which are like rivers right and they go into that ditch 
and then they turn and they go going through that ditch down the road that goes into the lift station they go going through another ditch up just the other side of the church and go into another ditch on up by homestead all that so, water so, yeah so all those ditches we just actually did a stress analysis and we they'll be lined with a geosynthetic synthetic mat which is kind of a fiber mat so one you can get the grass growing through it and then two it helps reinforce that earth but then any place we have like a turn where the water's got a turn it's going to be reinforced with rip rip that's a 90 degree turn yes at that point yeah. going down the road into the lift station so and that ditch catches more water than then I think it's what's coming out of Camry Square at this point right now. Of course, it's coming down the roads now because the, the underground drainage is not sufficient right. and not working properly. Right. Well, if you, you see the, um, the storm drain pipe that they're installing, it's a lot larger with that much you have up there, so you're gonna have a little bit of in-system storage and hopefully slow that down and then uh, have a, be not quite as uh, fast moving through those ditches. And well, the other day in that rain event, it, the ditch was full and encroached over the hill and went south over Mar over Robertsdale Road, the water did. There was a sheet of water three inches deep going over the ditch and coming across all the way down to Robertsdale Road, which is into the bayou after right. that. I mean, okay. the ditch wasn't handling it. After yeah, the we day. had the guys up there kind of monitoring that and looking at it and trying to figure out what was going on. So we're, we're aware of that. But you are going to line the ditch yes, to keep it from eroding in. Yes. Okay. Yes, Jeff, you said you increased the size of the drainage pipes in that area. What, what were they and what did they go to? Uh, I think that what you, most of the stuff we're putting out there now is like a 36 by 23, 30 inch pipe equivalent. And most everything out there was 18 inch or below. But now that's on the smaller side. It's 30, 36, and all that. So they vary throughout? Oh, yeah, they vary. You have the size of the, the, the water. Y'all put, putting 36 inch all the way? No, it's not all the way. It's, it depends on what how much water is coming to that particular system. So we'll design each one based on the amount of water that comes to it. But I'm like, I'm like Rusty, I'm concerned with the drainage in that sure. particular area. Hopefully we put in large enough drain pipes to uh, yes, sir. cover the, that, like you scheduled 15 inches of rain there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason my concern was that ditch is the Pipes they're putting in are bigger, but this ditch is not getting bigger unless, yeah. unless you know. There's going to be some additional work on the ditches, but we just have to get to that point. Okay. Any other council comments before we open it up for any public, any citizens have? I do. Uh, I do have one. Uh, I just, it was probably about two and a half months ago. Uh, we had some really dry weather. Mm -hmm and they were not out there to be seen for about three weeks and i just want to make sure that those days were accounted for those as days are accounted for um so uh, as you can see we have a, a gentleman by the name of mr joe peru on site he's got a little, little short guy mm -hmm. and he's out there every day and if, you, mm -hmm. if there's six hours of dry weather then this county doesn't work mm -hmm. who's responsible for addressing the ruts in the road on martin bluff itself the cut cut through those are the contractor yeah, he's responsible for maintaining those until you can get a, a sufficient course of asphalt so he's not affiliated with your company at all i'm sorry he's not affiliated with y'all's company at all no no that's the contractor who wants who's that he reports to you yeah well but he doesn't report to me well I mean, the engineer oversees the project the so he's yes. the point of contact yes so you you got into this project in 2001 yes sir I'm new to this conversation, but it seems like that road's been been worked on for quite some time now. Yeah. Well, no, we had the money, but the road hasn't been worked on all that time. Yeah, the road the actually road. the notice received was November 18th of 2021. Yeah, it's when construction started. Trying to get the engineering plans and the funding and everything in place started in 2001. Yeah, and we started out with a grant way back then, and then we. Passed the bond in the 2009 issue. series, we added a million dollars to that grant to try yeah. to get this road going, and then you went through the, what we've been doing process of buying houses and everything. And so it's been a very been long gated process. And then the construct, and then the price, price went up, so we didn't have enough money, so we had to get more money. money. <clears throat> 
So you said the beginning date was November 18, 2021. Do we have a projected? The projected date right now is May, May time frame. Mm -hmm. That's 279 working days. And like I said, this is a working day contract. So if it goes to rain for the next three weeks and they can't work, then unfortunately we can't charge those days against them because physically they can't work. But like Mr. College at Richmond said, if there's days where it's dry weather where we know they could be working, then they're going to be charged a day for that. And towards the end of the project, they reconcile between the working days that they missed out on the rain days. And if it matches up to saying they're not done, then we can start hitting them with liquidated damages if they're not completed. That's correct. That there was some discussion this morning during our, um, we do a bi-weekly construction meeting. And I don't know if y'all are, uh, we're, we kind of went through a lapse there where we weren't doing taking minutes because it was just the same thing every time. But we're getting a lot more activity. So you're going to probably see uh, minutes from each of those meetings. Hopefully they come to your box. If not, let me know and we can get those to you. But one of the items of discussion today was beginning to work on some of the weekends. Um, one, I want to make sure that the city is good with that. And two, we got to make sure that we coordinate with anybody because uh, I don't want anything to happen like a broken water line and you have to call somebody out of time. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> yeah. coordinate with that with the city manager and our public works provider. Yeah, make up days, take advantage of them, good, and just coordinate with the city. Right. Well, like I said, we got to make hay while the sun shines. So. Yeah. Is that all you had, Councilman? That's Posh? it. Let's see, Jeff, if we any citizen comments on the presentation? Do y'all have any questions? Any questions? No questions? Jeff, I just want to thank you and Gulf Breeze for communicating with the city staff. I know it's been hectic. I know the citizens are aggravated um, with crossing over the potholes and the ruts, just like we as council members and mayor are aggravated with having to do it. But it's a growing pain. When it's all said and done, everybody be excited about the project to have a nice multi-use pathway. Um, on the <coughs> north and on the south side. So, um, the, you know, everybody says y'all communicate well with the staff, y'all respond promptly, the contractor does. Um, and they had said, hopefully this week, if no rain, they would pave on Thursday. Um, that was their update that they said. So hopefully Thursday we'll see some asphalt going on some curbing out there, whatever concrete. I hope so. And then also um, they were only about two to three weeks behind schedule as of now due to the weather and supply chain demand. Right. So hopefully they can make those make time, time on good days. Yes, so thank y'all for working with our staff and getting updates and responding promptly to them. If there's any questions, Feel free to call me. Call oh, Miss April and Chief Chief get a hold of me. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. <clears throat> Councilman George, will you turn on the lights? It's just it's a presentation. Oh, okay. That brings us to our business agenda item number one conduct a public hearing regarding the municipal budget for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 by our city manager, Miss Paula Yancey. Okay, this is our recommended budget, annual budget for fiscal year 2023. We had a work session on August the 11th. Uh, we're having our public hearing, of course, tonight, and we will adopt the budget next Tuesday night, which will be September 13th. That's our proposed schedule. The current millage rate in the, for FY 2022 is 43 mils. General but general fund millage is 33.89. This includes 2.80 mills dedicated to public safety. The debt service millage is 8.11, and the library is one mill, which equals 43 mills. There is no proposed millage increase for FY 2023. General millage will be 31.09. General public safety millage will be 2.80. Debt service will be 8.11. And the library will be 1 mil. 
The 2022 mill value to the city, which is the value of one mill, that's how much money it brings to the city, one mill. 2022, it was $123,251. For 2023, the value, mill value to the city is $123,918. Our projected revenues for FY 2023 are $11,250,849. The proposed budget expenditures are $12,522,929. So our general fund budget focus for fiscal year 2023 have been foundations required to spur economic development, improvements to make Gaucher competitive in the development and workforce marketplace, improvement of the quality of life for Gaucher citizens through improved city services and expanded recreation services, continuation and expansion of events that showcase the city as a vibrant community and bring in non-residential visitors and promotion of the city in order to increase your sales tax revenue. We're also trying to address understaffing and personnel with retention as a professional and dedicated workforce is imperative to setting the foundation required to further appeal to developers. This pie shows how the general fund expenditures in the fiscal year 2023 budget plays out between departments. So the big, biggest part of the pie you see there in that bright blue color is public safety. 52.16% of our budget will be spent on public safety in fiscal year 2023. 16.79%, which is the kind of purpley blue color, will be spent on administrative departments. 7.75% of the budget, which is the turquoise blue, will be uh, spent on debt service. 11%, which is the lime green, will be spent on general expense. 5.73% will be spent on general maintenance, that's the orange. And 6.57% will be spent on recreation. This is the 2023 coast millage rates. The millage rate in Gaucher, if you look at all these, is second to lowest. We've got the Moss Point School District, which is 58.78 mils. The city of Moss Point, which is 54.21 mils. Uh, the Pascagoula Gaucher School District, which is 50.50 mils. Pascagoula, which is 54.50 mils. Gaucher, of course, is 43 mils. Ocean Springs School District is 66.69 mils, and Ocean Springs is 28.92 mils. Is that their new rate? Yes, sir. So these are some things that are included in the fiscal year 2023 budget. Continued funding of a step plan increase for police and fire that was adopted last year. It's an automatic anniversary step increase for our uh, first responders. Four police cars and equipping those police cars is included in the budget. Necessary equipment for the fire department, which includes jaws of life, turnouts, and boots. Engineering for our American Recovery Fund projects. We're upgrading our website is proposed in the budget to get a more user-friendly website. Sports equipment and upgrades at our recreational facilities. We've increased abatements. Increases in fuel and utility, as you know, both of those things have gone up, so we had to show the increase in our budget. Additional street lighting, uh, the council has been talking about. <coughs> Upgrades to the city hall booth. Um, preliminary design of a, we call it Lark Park, but it's a park up in Hickory Hills by the current Buddy Davis. Um, so we're getting a preliminary design done of that and a 50 cent cost of living raise for administrative employees. As far as utilities goes, the minimum bill excluding garbage is based on 3,000 gallons and is currently $52.50. The JCUA rate or the wastewater rate uh, that the city pays to JCUA in fiscal year 2019 to 2020 
our increase was $245,292 a year. In fiscal year 2020 and 2021, our increase was $415,368 a year. In fiscal year 21-22, we had no increase. Fiscal year 2022 to 2023, which is this current budget year, if we are increasing, JCUA is increasing the fee to the city by $96,936. The total increase has been $757,596 as reflected on there. Um, prior to this year, we have not passed that along to our, our constituents, our users. Um, the city has absorbed it thus far. All right, that's the budget presentation. Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shanson. Good job. Is that all of them? Okay. No citizen comment. Oh, on this, Ms. Shanson, yes. you got, okay. Come to the front, state your name, address, and three minutes. <coughs> Mark Olson, 2504 Robert Hiram Drive, Gaucher. With the uh, emphasis on capital projects and attracting new businesses and whatever to the city, I would hope you would consider increasing the maintenance budget. I mean, that's the first impression people get of the city. And uh, I think we could do a lot with the, the landscaping, the sidewalks, the street lights, the roads, and I don't see any increase to those. And, uh, so the existing people continue to uh, kind of suffer and the new people get a magic carpet. So I would hope you would consider increasing the maintenance budget. Thank you, Mr. Olson. In that budget, it didn't have an increase in landscaping, Mr. Olson. She didn't maybe have it in her presentation. Yeah. Okay, that brings us to Business agenda item number two, adoption of a resolution fixing the municipal tax levy for FY 2022 to 2023. But April, are you taking it, Miss Stennett, or are you taking it, Miss Shancy? This is every year you have to pass the tax levy. It has to go to the county and to the state. It has to be adopted the night of the budget hearing. So this is just to, to um, assess the current milling rates. Okay. Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we adopt a resolution fixing a municipal tax levy for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 with no increase in ad valorem or no increase in millage. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Jackson. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George. Councilman Jackson. No comment. Councilman Galat. No comment. Councilman College. No comments. Councilman Anderson. No. Councilman Elvin. No comment. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number three, approval of the master redevelopment plan for the Goche Town Center and former Singh River Mall property, Ms. Shancy. Uh, yes, attached you'll find the master plan. Um, I think that some of you asked for this several months ago, um, and we've spent a lot of time preparing it and getting your input and getting your ideas. And basically what this is, is this is your vision for the property. It is not in stone, it's very fluid, but it's the way you envision the development looking um, and this really the important the most probably important thing here is the street grids that are on there that's kind of determines your layout um, but as you well know you know depending there's some things that are in stone like the performing arts center the parking things like that but the rest of it is pretty much conditioned upon the interest that you have, but this is basically adopting your vision for development of that property. And that's what I understood Council wanted was a vision for development to go by. Okay, thank you, Ms. Shancy. Do we have any public comments? Mark Olson, 
1925 Rock Hiram Drive negotiate. Is there any kind of additional information what's envisioned with the Performing Arts Center, the entertainment area, and the hospitality area? As far as what architectural renderings or or the, the vision for them, I mean, there's going to be an amphitheater right across the road, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's envisioned for all this hospitality entertainment type uh, stuff? Yeah, we got some Set. photos. And yeah, we've got some photos of, and I think you probably seen them. So, I think you were here of what the amphitheater is supposed to look like and what the performing arts center is supposed to look like. So, roughly. The Performing Arts Center, it's envisioned, is going to go, give me a second, I might write the directions, on the northwest side of the property, right in front of the roundabout. And the envision is you've got an amphitheater across the street. People are going to come early to it. We've got a contract with Nathan Ball, with 46 Entertainment, to bring in acts there. People are going to come early to come to the concert. They can come look around the Performing Arts Center and around that will be an entertainment area where maybe songwriters can perform, restaurants, places to hang out, kind of like the wharf sort of. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, something for people to <clears throat> do prior to going to the concert. There will also be overflow parking for the amphitheater. So the hospitality part is if you're coming from Hattiesburg or uh, Gulf Shores or Alabama somewhere to come to a concert, you're going to want to have a place to stay. You're not going to want to drive home at midnight. So the hospitality portion of it was really just to accommodate the needs that that amphitheater is going to bring. That's why we envision the hospitality part of it. Is that, is that what you want to know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Kind of sort of like going to all these other downtown areas that have venues where you can do stuff and walk around a walkable community in a downtown area. I didn't realize we were going to relocate City Hall. What's going to happen with the uh, existing one? Well, actually, that is a vision and a real need. It's not uh, something we have funding for, but we are pretty maxed out here. If I need additional people, I have no place to put them. Like, every ounce of space we've got is used. So, you know. Yeah. You eventually are going to grow as the city grows and you're going to need a city hall. So we've actually talked about, again, this is just kind of a vision and a dream, there's no funding there yet, but we've talked about maybe moving city hall into the downtown area and making that part of the downtown development kind of on that other end of where the Performing Arts Center is and then maybe making this something for planning and some other extra offices so there's nothing in stone nobody's drawing anything up it's just kind of what we would like that's our vision yes sir this have been on the wall yeah thank you mr Olson. the performing arts center that's the uh songwriters here songwriters yeah yes. yeah museum yes yeah claude stubbs 2501 by van road uh, go see. I'm like Mr. Olson. I see a lot of things going on, and I know we want to be the playground of South Mississippi. But when I go to the east in Pascagoula, I see a lot of things just growing as far as merchant and stuff to bring in tax revenue for the cities. Go to the west, Ocean Springs, growing like you know weeds and stuff like that. But I don't see that happening in Gaucher, uh, and I, I'm just curious as to why, or uh, maybe I'm missing something, as to why this is not happening in the city of Gaucher, where we're getting some type of businesses that will assist the citizens with the tax base and stuff like that, as far as growth is concerned. Uh, you know, we have very few things that's growing up. We've got the all day ocean swings, we've got a couple of businesses that I see pop up in Pascagoula. So can somebody enlighten me on why what's going on here? I wouldn't mind. Can go see? Well, as far as the Aldi, just so you know, unfortunately we don't have what they want to be by. And they want to be by a number one competitor. We don't have that located in our city. Okay. So that's why they look in there. And they are also looking at another city that has that same chain that they might go by somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's why we went and get an Aldi's. But we are the city manager. We have tax incentives available that we are currently offering to people. Um, you know, we have 
property owners who have cleaned and paid thousands of dollars on the highway to abate their property because it was tidelands, um, wetlands, and they had to spend forty, fifty thousand plus dollars to get it developable. So, you know, they've done that and it's on the market. You know, realtors are prime working with prime investors. They call the chamber. The chamber sends them to the city. Um, Ms. Shancy, do you want to comment any further? Well, actually, too, since I've been here, your sales tax revenue has increased greatly from when I first came here okay. in 2016. So just because you don't see, you know, some recognizable chain doesn't mean that you aren't getting new businesses that are bringing sales tax revenue. Now, I agree with you. We would love to see more. And I think once you start breaking ground, we start breaking ground on this amphitheater and the word starts getting out. You know, historically, if you look at other cities that have built amphitheaters that have those national acts coming in, everything starts to pop up around and it kind of drives and pulls people in. So I think you will see more development, particularly on the Old Singing River Mall property and in that area. But your sales tax has increased in the last several years. So there are new businesses op opening. And what I would like to also just <clears throat> reinstate is this whole development is not just based solely on the amphitheater getting constructed. We this master site plan's got plenty of retail and commercial space on there that can stand alone on its own. And ideally what Mayor Vonner said is a downtown field, especially on that west side, that will have restaurants, retail, uh, entertainment venues, and things that will generate sales tax revenue for the city outside of the use of the amphitheater. Okay. Our, our problem is we got 55 acres here we can't build nothing on right now because of Belk. And, okay. and, he, and our citizens need to know that we're in a right. problem with Belk right now. They won't let us build nothing because of a contract clause in a contract when they built that store over there or when they took it over. We can't build nothing over there right now. Without their approval. Without their approval. Right. Everything that we put in there. So that's being negotiated now through a lawsuit and we'll see where it goes. But. That, that's the problem. Every, nobody wants to come here, it seems like, because we can't develop that 55 acres. If that ever kicks off, then everything's going to kick off. All right. All right. And, uh, uh, Mr. Like Jackson wanted yeah, to say something. I would say one thing. You know, if you look at um, where the city of Gauthier sits, and you, you mentioned Osher Springs and other cities. So if you look at what Osher Springs, Diabville, and et cetera, sits, they're developing faster because uh, casinos sit center of them. People, they, they, um, people are traveling for them, back and forth to casinos, etc. So those areas are going to get more traffic, more foot traffic than we're going to get. Um, if you look at Diabville, the they just blossom. And a lot of people are like, well, how come our city didn't blossom like Diabville? Well, we're not sitting right in front of the direction of the casinos for you to get to. So it doesn't blossom that fast, but we are we are growing as a city, as they explained. Um, we just we we'll, we're going to create our own attraction versus we're developing off of somebody else's attraction. Okay. You know. All right. And you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll make one comment. I grew up in the Ivorville, and I don't want to be at the Ivorville. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want this to be. It still continue to have a small town feel, and if we get that property out there done, then we will just expand along Highway 90. But I don't want to see congestion like you've got. Right. right. Drive through Ocean Springs any hour of the day. It's nuts. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And Mr. Stubbs, I just want to let you know that we, you know. You might not see it because you might not have had to go to any of their facility. But in the northern part of the city this past week, they had a ribbon cutting on another phase. BMV Orthopedic com continues to invest to get development spurred up there with all their stuff. So because of all their improvements up there, that will help with economic development to recruit some stuff to the northern part of the city and that medical commerce. Also, the Sand Hill Crane development on 57 and Highway 90, they've permitted for their second phase also for 
retail spot, office space, which is needed. You know, when you have a restaurant call the city, a local person wanting to open a restaurant, they want a place that is currently buildable, ready, already have equipment and stuff. Well, we don't have any buildings. We're blessed that all of our buildings for that type of thing are full. So, you know, we don't have the space also to lease to some of these people that want small type environments. Um, we need those structures and investments made. So if you know anybody that wants to build on any commercial lots, some building space, we got people wanting to go in building space because they call and they're looking. A prime example, somebody called the other day wanting 3,000 square feet. Well, in the city of Gotra, there's only two locations that have that available currently for what they were looking for. It's up to them to negotiate and we're here to assist them um, with their request. Of course, they don't tell us what they want. They just call and ask. We don't know what they're trying to bring. Um, so we put them in contact. So we are working to recruit and help people who want to come here. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That brings us any other citizen comments on that agenda topic? No. That brings us to business. Do we need, uh, do we need to do a motion to uh, approve it or we just. Yeah. 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 My name is Charles Moore and I live in 1920 West Park with Gauthier. I want to know, is Gauthier Bank Clean Road going to be able to handle the traffic? Are uh, y'all going to widen it out or anything? But when did all the business start coming in? It should be. It. There's no plans to widen Gauthier Bank Clean Road. It should be able to handle the it's increase. It's already handling 30 something thousand cars a day, is it? Yeah, 38, 39, 40,000? You got that's pretty heavy. Well, that's that's you know, angles. Yeah, that's just the, that's there. like we don't have that problem industry. on the weekends. On it's the weekends a, and yeah. night, you're not having that when they're. That's when the shipyard is letting right. out. So that development will not affect when they're getting out. All right, then I'm going to have. Okay. Do we have a motion and a? to approve the master redevelopment plan for Goche Town Center and former Zingan River Mall property. So moved. Motion by Councilman Anderson. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Galat. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George. Uh, Councilman Jackson. Yes, Councilman Galat. Good job so far. I wish this had been on the wall where everybody out here could have seen it. <laughs> Councilman College. Uh, just to reiterate that while we're approving this, this is still a fluid master plan and things are subject to change on a, on a weekly to daily basis depending on uh, how things progress. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Anderson? Yes, and I failed to say something a while ago uh, about Belk. I haven't bought any from that store, anything from that store in two and a half years and I plan not to ever buy nothing from Belk again until this is settled. And if everybody in this city would do that, we probably would get things going over there going faster than what we are. That's all I got. Councilman. I just want to thank the city staff um, for the working it's needed for development and recruiting potential development because they look at, want to see some envision plans and a hard color version and for the citizens who have not seen it you can go to our website and click on our agenda and it is there under agenda items and the rendering it's all colorful in there you're more than welcome um, to go there and view it um can i got one. go ahead can we get a big blow up of this thing and put it in the lobby of city hall which people come in here they will see it Put on there, plan in big letters. Plan. <laughs> but it can, it could change depending on what kind of development yeah, no, might be. So put that on idea. there. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number four: consideration of a redesigned city of Goche seal by Ms. April Stennett. Yes, sir, Mayor. As you're aware, you all approved a new city logo at the last meeting, which you saw on both presentations today. I thought those looked really nice. Um, after the Christie Fountain Agency 
provided us that little bit of sleep. They did let us know that um, they had a few grant hours left over as part of that uh, 5C grant program through the Chamber and Chevron. So they offered to make us a coordinating seal for consideration. So um, we have shown you a few versions and this is I think the final version that we want to present to you. It does feature our crane and some water, um, the same sort of um, cattails that are in the logo and we're using the same photo uh, the same blues both blues in that logo so we think this will complement nicely this of course will be used for some of your more professional um, publications and whatnot where the logo which is more informal would not suit um, so this is what we're considering as a replacement for the current seal that is directly behind you in the center there thank you miss Stinnett. do we have any public comments on this agenda item None. Do we have a motion by council? Yes. Yay. So moved. Hell we, yes. have, we have a motion by Councilman George. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman College. Any discussion starting with Councilman George? Oh, I love it. It's so much better. And I want it on shirts and everything. Because like I told you all before, your brand is important. And I think this is really going to help the brand and the outlook on Gautier. You know, when you travel city to city, you go to Seaside, Florida, you go to Great Beach, you see all their logos and their branding, and it really changes the perspective of the city. So I like it. Thank you, Councilman George. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman Gallant? No comment. Councilman College? Uh, I s find this as being new and fresh in regards. I know we don't ever want to leave behind our heritage, the city's begun and so forth, but I think this is a, a step in a positive direction on branding this city. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Anderson? No. Councilman Alvin? No comment. Okay. Motion and a second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number five. A resolution directing the placement of liens on properties located in Gautier, Mississippi for fees and charges incurred by the City of Gautier to abate the unsafe conditions of vacant structures pursuant to the Mississippi Code Section 21-1911 by Planning Director Mr. Scott Ankerson. Thank you, Mayor. This is uh, simply just coming forth and asking for council's approval for the placement of lien on the property at 3309 Havel Road. The abatement's already been performed. And this is just so the county will actually place the link. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. Do we have a motion by council? So moved. A motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Councilman George. Any discussion starting with Councilman George? Uh, no comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman Gallant? This is liens going on. All previous properties that we've cost incurred on. This is this is specifically the 3309 Havel. Just I don't see that. It's here. the attachment. It's the okay. okay, it's in the attachment. Yes, Come on, I, got attachment. You. I got you. All right, I got it. You got it. You, you I got it. it. Okay. Got All right. Comes from <laughs> college. I'm reading the term. If, I, I if I'm not mistaken, I thought I thought we were going through a different process where this was going to have to come in front of us each time, or is this going to be a process to where every time? Every time? The way the county is required. So after after we finish the abatement, then we've actually got to go ahead and approve this for it to go on to the county. So, so that's okay. just got, it's going to be a two-step process now. Yeah. We can't do it all at once. We tried to work with the county. I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's what the, what the county has asked us to do to. Somebody go back to the county and tell them put it in a one step process. Mm -hmm. yeah. You recommend that? Yes, sir. Well, I think the part of it is you know, we approve the abatement, but we don't know what the actual costs are, and we can't implement that in our motion to abate. So I think once we do, once we get our final abatement cost associated with it and the penalty, then they got to assess it as a lien on the property. That's true. Mm -hmm. Boys, man. <laughs> Too man. much paper. Checks and balances. I did have something I don't forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we'll be doing this every meeting, whether it's one, two, or three things, every meeting just about. If, we, if, if there is we one. Abatements regularly, then yes, okay. it could be every meeting. That's all. Councilman Elvin? No comment. 
All in favor? Motion carries. By the way, I'm perfectly fine with having to approve this at every council meeting if we get to, if it means cleaning up the city. <laughs> Business agenda item number seven, approval of change. Number six was six. full. Oh, six, I'm sorry. Um, business agenda item number seven, September um, approval of change order number two, summary final pay application, certificate of substantial completion, and other closeout documents for the Town Commons Park Phase One project by Ms. April Stennett. I'm sorry. Town Commons. I'm sorry, yes, Mayor. Just, Just so I... everybody knows, we pulled by the city manager <laughs> business section to number six. This is approval of all of our closed out documents and our change order number two, which is our summary change order and our certificate of substantial completion, and to approve our final pay application. Um, that amount of that final pay application is, <clears throat> excuse me. Two hundred forty thousand four hundred seventy-eight and ninety-six cents. Um, this summary change order decreased the contract amount by seventy thousand nine hundred sixty-six dollars and fifty-eight cents, which is excellent news. Um, that was just um, basically to get all of the quantities reconciled, even the final quantity adjustments there. Um, there were no big major items included to that. Um, Seymour reviewed the change order and the final payout and the certificate of substantial completion. We did have a final walkthrough out there with several items on a punch list. Um, all, if not all, most of those have been completed to date, um, and we will hold that check until they have finally um, been completed and we'll send that out. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Stinnett. Do we have any public comments on that agenda item? No public comments. Do we have a motion approval of the change order number two summary certificate of substantial completion and close out documents in the final pay application in the amount of $240,478.96 for the Town Commons Park Phase 1 project? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion? Start with Councilman George. No comment. Councilman Jackson. No comment. Councilman Gallat. Phase one is defined as the infrastructure and the paving of the roads out there for the amphitheater only. Yep, that's for the town commons park. Not, not all the sidewalks are put in, none of the landscaping is done, so it was the clearing, and the drainage. putting in the drainage, the infrastructure, the water and sewer. Uh, it was for the um, certain amount of the sidewalks, the paving, the striping, uh, clearing out around the pond, um, and then there was some additional drainage work done on the far side of that parking lot. Um, had to be stabilized some more, so that's kind of in a nutshell what it was. Clearing was a large part of it, and bringing in dirt, field dirt. I just say a set so the people in the audience would know what's going on with it, phase one. That's Thank it. you, Councilman Gallat. <laughs> Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Anderson? The ponds, I've asked about the ponds. They still look very tacky. Are they going to be cleaned in phase two, along well, with the landscaping? There's really, the, when you first drive in, there's one that's got a lot of grass. It's kind of a wet area. That, can't be touched. But when you go around the one where he's cleaned out around it, <clears throat> and then he's supposed to get the, I, I call it debris around, we're going to clean out around there in the next phase, and then we're putting a, he's trying to let the pond fill up. April said she went out there and it was filled up nicely because it was down real low. But it shouldn't be with that rain we had. <laughs> we're going to put a, I can't remember the name of it, but there's something that doesn't damage any wildlife that you can put in the pond that makes it a really pretty color. I just can't call the name of it. So that's what we're going to do in the next phase. Why can't the first pond be touched? That pond, I used to fish in that pond when I was a kid. It didn't have grass in it. Now it's got grass in it. Why can't it be cleaned? That doesn't make sense. Didn't. Maybe not, but that's what the Corps of Engineers is determined. Well, Corps, the Corps of Engineers needs to come to their light that, that we used to fish in that pond. It was 
the water. It was deep enough to fish in. There was no grass in it. Now, because it's got grass in it, you can't clean it out. It doesn't make sense at all. So we got the permit. That was part of the wetland area, if I'm not mistaken, and we couldn't touch. We need to buck them on it. Part of the wetlands when you was a kid. <laughs> it was a man-made pond. It was a man-made pond, like all those ponds are. Uh, could you give us an update on the uh, the phase two being going out? Phase two is being currently being designed as far as the park amenities. As far as the amphitheater goes, we've already authorized to go out for beds, but we got kind of off in the weeds a little bit and had to get with Nathan and so far as, I'm going to put it in terms of understanding, weight the beams could hold on the thing to hold the sound and they did some sort of Nathan Baugh did some sort of hot heat something where you could see how far the sound would go so they had to adjust where they put the speakers and they were just trying to make sure they got it right but it's supposed to go out for be up here real shortly but the rest of it is being designed along with the landscaping and everything. We're ready for phase two, right? Yes sir, that's what we're working on now. Okay, keep a fire under them. <laughs> that all comes from that guy. Councilman Nelvin. No comment. We have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman Anderson. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number eight. Approval of the docket of claims everybody received on digitally. Also, it's on the website attached to the agenda document for the public um, by our city clerk, Ms. Teresa Montgomery. So do we have any public comments? No public comments. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. We approve the docket of claims provide that all entries thereon are true, correct, properly entered, not fraudulent. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Gallat. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George. Councilman Jackson. No, no comment. Councilman Gallat. No comment. Councilman College. No comment. Councilman Anderson. No. Councilman Nelpin. No. All in favor? <laughs> Motion carries. That brings us to our consent agenda. All items are approved in one motion unless somebody wants to remove one. Approval of minutes from the budget work session held August the 11th, 2022, and recess council meeting held August 16th, 2022 with a cor correction. Number two, received July 2022 finance reports. Three, approval of sponsorship for the 2022 Goche Mullet and Music Festival. Four, approval to accept monetary donations for the City of Gotray's Cruising Through the Decades event. Five, request to waive the pavilion rental at George Martin City Park for the First Methodist Church of Gotray's Bark in the Park and Blessing of the Pets event. Six, authorization to submit three applications to MDEQ for Mississippi Municipality and County Water Infrastructure Grant Program funds and to designate April Stennett as the authorized representative. Seven, authorization to request matching funding from Jackson County for three grant applications to the Mississippi Municipality and County Water Infrastructure Grant Program. Eight, re resolution accepting payments administered by the Mississippi Department of Public Safety under the Mississippi Law Enforcement and Firefighters Premium Pay Program for purposes of distribution to the law enforcement officers and firefighters employed by the City of Goche. Nine, approval of supplemental agreement number two for the Martin Bluff Road Way Improvements Project. Does anybody want to pull one? Do we have a motion to approve consent agenda items one through nine? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Second. Councilman Gallat seconds. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to study agenda number one, discuss citizen comments. You have three minutes. Come to the front, state your name and address. Any citizen comments? No citizen comments. That brings us to council comments. It's the first meeting of the month, so we start with Councilman George. I have not a comment. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the 
looking forward to that little speech. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> that brings us well, I don't to... Don't want me to say uh oh, 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 no, no. That brings us to Councilman Jackson. Uh, I got no comment. Councilman Gallad. Well. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Councilman College. Well, I'll take uh, Councilman George's spot. <laughs> uh, I would just like to thank uh, staff and entire department, City of Goche, uh, with the budget process went very smoothly. I'm excited about that. Our new logo, the uh, Second River Mall site. I mean, we have a lot of things in the works. We're just so close to just tapering over that side, and I'm excited for what the future holds for us. And look forward to this this next coming fiscal year. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Anderson. I do like the conception of the new mall site. Um, I think it's something that Belk should see. I think they'd be proud of it. Uh, maybe it um, take it up. Enthuse them to do something that us kick off some construction. I'd like to also thank the uh, contractor on the Mark Bluff Road project uh, for being attentive and out there in the middle of that frog string that we had. I and mean, then they were working on it, trying to keep the ruts where people could cross it because they were working on it. I would like to thank, thank them for that. That's all I got. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. Councilman Nelton. First, I'd like to thank uh, the fire department for a quick response to uh, my family's house in Valleywood. A uh, quick response, they found uh, smoke coming out of the house as well as the police department. I appreciate what they did to deal with that issue. Uh, Clearwater, do we have a schedule? I'm getting some calls in reference to over, over the sidewalks, there's branches and hanging down in, into the area where they would be walking. Do we have something scheduled to clear that up? Yes. Uh, Mr. Yancey, in the last meeting you said you bring Seymour Engineering up to 1600 Sunrise Drive to see if, if you know if there's anything that could be done in reference to the drainage from a uh, engineer's point of view. Was there anything? I haven't been able to get him up there yet. Yeah. I think last I left off, it's supposed to be a problem. I thought I had to get him right up there with some problem. I'm sure Ms. Jackson would be appreciative of that. Well, yeah, you know, maybe some FaceTime, she probably might help. Uh, the, the gentleman on the Martin Bluff Road, why, is he already gone? Mm -hmm. Who, who, the citizens are up in that neighborhood, who do they contact in reference to complaints other than the council people to, or social media? Is there somebody a point of contact? Is it you? Yes, sir. You can send them to me. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. But only the nice ones, right? Uh, <laughs> I can handle <laughs> Um. I want to echo um, what Councilman College said on the budget process. It seems um, that it's gotten easier from when I was first elected. Um, we were struggling. We had to cut, tell people they couldn't get stuff in their departments to run it like they should run it compared to other cities. And we were really down. So those cities that face those challenges I, during this time, I think we should keep them in the, our prayers, and we should say we're blessed here in the city of Goche for our staff who continue to um, make our budget process, but be able to accommodate the citizens with services that are needed um, without raising taxes. That's a good thing. So thank all of you. Also, um, the rainstorm event, thank the staff that was out in that event, public safety, um, both departments, you know, it was tragic rainfall um, that was not expected, brought in more rain than some hurricanes. So um, thank all of y'all. I know your phones were blowing up like mine, but we did the best we could in the situation that was provided. Hopefully Clearwater has a lot of notes 
where they need to go unblock and unclog drainage that's stopped up before we um, need it in a real emergency more than unexpected. And also, Clearwater, do we have a plan on the grass cutting and getting um, vines off stop signs that grass is growing up to the stop signs? And as we heard from a citizen tonight, Mr. Olson, um, beautification is important. Do we have an update on that, Mr. Russell? We're working on them every day. We're working eight to two hours every day. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Also, the crepe myrtles on the highway, as you, I, I noticed ours, and it's been, I've received several phone calls about it. Um, ours, have we, do we fertilize ours or not? on the highway. Does anybody know? Do we need to get a sponsor to fertilize them or? Rip them up. They, they used to cut them back <laughs> and then Will said, Will Batley said, when he's out there having to fertilize them, so I passed it on to Russell. Okay. Crate myrtle is like a weed. I don't know. It needs fertilizing. Yeah, the they, they do. They, if you go they to other places the and through the college, right, and go. Mm -hmm. People compared it to the college property. That's why I was questioning several people's called asking about it. Yeah, but you don't have the exhaust going around the college uh -huh. that you do down Highway 90. Um, okay, with that being said, um, Thank the fire department for working some tragic events in fire and also the police department has worked tragic events over the last um, couple of weeks. So we are, you know, thinking about y'all. Those are hard calls you have to go to and attend. Um, also, I'd like to recognize somebody who sits on the Boys and Girls Club um, Board of Directors back in the back, Mr. Billy Booth. Um, thank you for your volunteerism in the city. Councilman Brown and the board um, for constantly supporting the board and girls club. Um, we got to get some of our citizens, some other citizens, cities to come up to your standard. So I really thank you so much. We got a new CEO, um, Jennifer Anderson is now our new CEO, and so you'll be hearing from us. Thank you, thank you Mr. Booth. Also, we have um, our Goche. Um, Mullet Festival Chairman here, um, Mr. Wesley Ward in the back. Um, we thank you for your volunteerism and organizing the Go Trade Mullet Festival and thank you for what you do. All right, uh, yes, I uh, thank all of y'all also and uh, uh, I also like to thank my wife for making me do it. But hey, we also need all these citizens and what we do is we do this so we can give you all the events. Our sponsors give it to us. They help us out um, and, and supply money. And what we do is we put on an event and that, that creates money that goes towards a nonprofit and then we give back to the community. And uh, we've, we've given a lot of great money to a lot of good causes. So we want to spread the word and have everybody do their part and come out and enjoy it. Please, mm -hmm. thank you. And what's that, can you tell them about the date? October 27th. Good. And all the event we usually starts around 9, but if you want to come out there a little bit early and help out, I mean, we're, we're more than like happy to accept volunteers. Thank you so much for y'all's contribution. Um, and y'all also help nonprofits, and we appreciate that. Also, we have our Jackson County Utility Authority appointee to the board, Mr. Bill Lanham. Thank you for um, coming and joining us this evening. Well, uh, about two weeks ago, the JCUA adopted its budget. If y'all had any questions about it, I think it was a 6.3% increase. Uh, and I think that translated into like a four and a half percent increase for the city of Goche. So things are going good, completed a year now. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to meet with you and discuss them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. Also a reminder that um, all the coastal mayors or 
um, got together and the council, the boards have um, accepted it too, that we collect water to send to Jackson um, at our local fire department. So you still have time if you wanna donate any water, bottled water to go to Jackson, just drop it off at our fire departments. Um, we encourage you to support that cause. I also have a resolution that came in late and we couldn't get it on the agenda to, and I would ask that we, um, if we could have a motion to approve a sponsorship of the Friends of the Jackson County Animal Shelter, Pets of the Fifth Annual Paddle for Paws Poker Float to be held on September 17, 2022. And I presented the resolution um, the attorney prepared with a copy of the letter um, we, and documents we received from um, the county um, administrative assistant um, on this topic. So do we have a motion? The sponsorship's five hundred dollars. Yes. Do we have that budgeted? No, but I went back and looked, and they didn't bill us for any type of support this year at all. The, the, it used to be we paid. I can't remember exactly how much, but they lowered it to five hundred a year. And it's paid up the last couple of years, but. Get for it this year. Right. So we got a carryover. Okay. So based on that, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve a sponsorship of five hundred dollars for the fifth annual panels for Paul's poker float. We got a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George, Councilman Jackson, Councilman Galat. No. Councilman College. No. Councilman Anderson. No. Councilman Elvin. No. All in favor? Motion carries. We're blessed to have the county and the people who work at the animal shelter and run that because that is definitely needed in a community. That brings us to our um, city manager comments. In the comments, city attorney. I, I don't. I'm gonna go back and ask her. <laughs> I already know her answer. She, <laughs> Miss Montgomery, just told me no. Um, so uh, that will conclude. We thank everybody for coming. Do we have a motion? I got one more question, comment. Okay. You know, you you brought it up, crepe herbs. Okay. Personally, I hate them. But <laughs> I would like for our clear water solutions to look at the way those things are between the bridges. They're just in certain sections. If you ride along Highway 90, there is a lot of those bushes that have never bloomed and they're just awful looking. If there's a way that we could figure out to take out those unhealthy bushes, and I know it would help you guys on cutting that grass through that median all the way out there. Because today, there was a guy out there all day picking up trash with a little prong. And that takes a lot of time. So I would like to request Clearwater look at what we got out there on that highway. And if there's unhealthy bushes out there, why don't we remove them? There's some out there that have never grown more than a twig since I've lived in this city, which has been 37 years. Well, if they're leaning, they need to come up too. I, I mean, that's why I'm bringing it up. I drove them. They're growing in a ditch. It's got water in it 50% of the time. Look, we could all sit in. I would just like clear water to come back with a... Let's see what we can do to improve the median by taking out what I call crap murders. Well, uh, I'm not saying I ain't saying no more. Well, I don't think, I think the city manager can just get with them and direct them and they don't have to come back. She can get it looking good out there. Um, so. Can I say something real quick? Go ahead. Um, <laughs> to that. Can I start this? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I noticed Let's in Pascagoula they have like these concrete, you know, things. I guess it was a grant that gave them, you know, where they could do the concrete and the, the drainage is there. It's just concrete. No, you know that's I mean? the M dot project. That's oh, okay. the M dot project. Right. Yeah. Where they eliminated the ditches. Right. Yeah, our project went and bid like their project. Okay. 
<clears throat> what did you say that? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, do we have a motion to recess until next Tuesday mm -hmm. at September, the thir I mean, September 13th, 2022 at 6 p.m. So, so you already asked. Motion by yes. Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. All in favor? Uh, motion carries. We're recessed.